Hey there, your legends. My name's Fedor. I'm a Dutch touring stand-up comedian. And this is my friend Victor Patrashkan, a Romanian furry uh, stand-up comedian. Uh, and I like performing all over the world in weird places. And for the second time since the war started, I'm now in Ukraine. And Victor and me together are gonna visit three cities in the Ukraine and do three shows while we're here. Uh, we're not gonna take any money from those shows, by the way. That's all going to charity. Uh, I also did a few shows on the way over here in Czech Republic, Germany and Poland and all that money is also going to the same charities. Two charities are uh, Sirius, which is an animal shelter in north of Kiev, which has taken a lot of animals in since the start of the war. It went from 2,000 animals to 3,500 animals, so you know they can use whatever they can get right now. Uh, the other charity is Voices of Children. They help children psychologically deal with the trauma of war and prevent serious long-term trauma. And we're starting off in Lviv. Lviv is an absolutely gorgeous city. And it's also pretty much the furthest away from the front. It takes about a 12 hour drive from here to get to where the actual fighting is happening. So it's relatively safe. Now, of course, Russia has been dropping some like, long distance rockets. Uh, and there is some struggle here, mainly electricity. There's a huge electricity shortage. So half of the time there's no electricity and there's power outages. And there are a lot of generators throughout the city trying to keep life going as normal as possible. Because that's the other thing you will notice when you're here is that life is going on and it has to. The war has been going on for about 10 months now and you cannot be sobbing in a shelter for 10 months. I mean, you need a roof over your head, you need food, you need water, and also you need to, for your mental sanity, keep going. So what you see right now is almost Christmas. So people are doing Christmas shopping. You know, bars and restaurants are open. Theaters are having shows. Even some touristy things are still open. There's a, still a little tourist tour. To be honest, it doesn't seem to have a lot of work at the moment. You do still definitely see signs of the war. Of course, you see some military activity, which I'm not filming because, you know, I don't want to look like a Russian spy. And some important buildings are protected with sandbags and windows are boarded up. Uh, also some historical buildings like old churches, the windows are boarded up. And which was interesting to see some of the statues have cages around them that if the buildings around them collapse they kind of protect it. So even the statues are kind of prisoners of war right now. And there is the occasional air raid siren. And on the background there is actually a Ukrainian soldier taking a picture with it. his child or another child. Maybe he just stole a child. I don't know. All right Victor, show time. It is an absolute joy for me to be here. I absolutely love Ukraine. You guys are the nicest people as soon as I explain that I'm not Russian. Yes. <laughs> I've been really trying to support the, the past few months, trying to support you guys by small things, like not using a lot of electricity. I haven't used hot water for months. <laughs> I, I, like the main reason I'm here is to take a shower. <laughs> It's, but I'm really, really impressed with the, with the Ukrainians, with your bravery, and I don't just mean your troops, like everyone here. I'm, when I'm walking outside on the street now, with how slippery it is, I'm already scared. <laughs> and this afternoon, I pretty much got murdered by a 16-year-old on an e-scooter that just like, run! <laughs> Not a, he didn't, didn't give a fuck! It's like, why don't you send those guys to the front, just on the e-scooter, just storm at the Russians? The show in Lviv was a lot of fun. The room was pretty packed, we almost sold out, uh, and mainly had Ukrainians in the audience, only three foreigners, which made it really nice because they really enjoyed the show. Uh, some people also came to us after the show saying they really appreciated just getting you know, out of the war for two hours and just enjoying themselves and forgetting about all the misery. And also for us, it was a lot more fun performing for the Ukrainians because we could talk more about the war. Uh, because we noticed also here, but especially outside of the Ukraine, if you mention the war, the audience gets tense, nervous, can you really joke about it? But here you notice they appreciate you addressing the situation. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. And now we are already actually in Kiev. Drove here yesterday, it was an eight hour drive. The road's pretty good, uh, but was still a bit challenging because they took down all the traffic signs so that, you know, Russians cannot find the capital. But also occasionally the GPS signal is jammed, which is great that Russians cannot find the capital, but it was also difficult for us. Kiev is also eight hours closer to the front to where the actual fighting is happening and is also hit a bit more often. Actually, the day before we came here, rockets fell and 
actually this morning as well there was an air raid and some infrastructure was hit by rockets we actually slept through the air raid alarm which is not a good thing because it would have been better to hide uh, but i did hear one of the explosions in the distance and as a consequence we don't have running water anymore at the moment but you know uh, so far the ukrainians have been great at fixing this stuff fast so hopefully we will have running water again the biggest concern for victor this morning was if we're going to be able to get coffee and now we're going to explore kiev a bit uh, see how it's changed since the last was here two months ago how people are doing uh, so yeah let's have a look i already covered kiev in my last vlog if you haven't seen that yet check it out but kiev is a really lovely city i really enjoy it and in general for both lviv actually and kiev i really recommend going you know after the whole war situation because there's such pretty cities and great food restaurant the surface is amazing so yeah definitely go after the war and check it out Guys, this is not my yeah not my first time in Ukraine, also not the first time during since the war started. The last time when I came here, this was the first time for me entering a country which is at war. Uh, so it was surprising and weird and strange to see how, how life goes on, you know, that the bars are open, the restaurants are open, Glovo guys still cycling around and delivering. <laughs> I ordered in last time when I was here, and I ordered with the app, order a pizza, I see the guys picking it up on the app, Sergei, we'll never forget his name. He's cycling towards me. And about eight minutes later, for the first time in my life, I hear an air raid siren. So I do what you do, shit myself. <laughs> then went to the basement, where I found myself alone. <laughs> because nobody sent me the memo <laughs> to fucking ignore it. Thunder, <laughs> like scared. Not even realizing that I'm alone, by the way. That took me like an hour to realize. Why is nobody else coming down? This is getting a bit awkward. It's, they're looking at my phone just like in panic mode, like what's happening? Are bombs dropping? Is the big one dropping? And I see just on that, that Sergey is still fucking cycling. Well, I'm there in panic mode. And eight minutes later, he walks in the basement. As a pretentious French waiter, casually <laughs> carrying the pizza, <laughs> like popping around the corner, slightly annoyed that he had to come downstairs for it. <laughs> it's a pizza for Fyodor. This is the one time I accepted Fyodor. <laughs> and he went on. And this experience, like, sincerely changed my life. Because now, going back to Bulgaria. <laughs> Which is not the part you should laugh at. It's sad, I know, but it's sad. I'm going to back to Bulgaria and if I order food there and Ivan Glovo comes over, how the fuck am I gonna give Ivan a five-star review? <laughs> <laughs> or Mohammed the Uber driver for that matter. I'm like yeah, you got me to my destination safe, but there was no minefield. <laughs> Two stars, you try. I'm still wondering, and I'm actually hoping to find out how far. The delivery area goes. Is there, are there like soldiers in the trenches on the app go like, do you feel like pizza today? <laughs> oh no, let's go for McDonald's. They cannot have McDonald's. We can show them the Happy Meal box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's what I sincerely like about performing here is because you're almost all of you are Ukrainian is that I can talk about the war. If I do comedy outside of here, like in Bulgaria or Netherlands for that, that matter, if I, as soon as I say, like, ah, I recently went to the Ukraine, it's just dead silence. You can hear anuses go. You can see everyone go. That was a really fun show. Uh, really happy with, uh, with the result there. Like, it was sold out. Uh, mainly Ukrainians had a lot of fun, a lot of laughter. Great chats with them afterwards. They really appreciated it. And yeah, Victor, Victor Patroskan, he did great. I know in this video it only looks like he's always on his phone, but when he puts down the phone, he is actually very funny. And he put some videos of his stand-up performance on his YouTube channel. So put a link below so you can check that out. Highly recommend it. Same for Alexander Kutura, our, our local friend that opened for us. If you're a Ukrainian, check out his comedy because it's mainly in Ukrainian. And it was just great to be able to perform on that stage again where David Letterman performed while he was in Kiev to interview Zelensky. We were supposed to do a third show in Chernovitsi, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, I'm sorry. It's a pretty small town with not a lot of English proficiency, so it just didn't work out to do a show over there. And now we're already back in Bulgaria. Uh, so this is not a destroyed building because of the war. This is just a normal Bulgarian derelict, abandoned, half-finished building, as we have them a lot here. 
Unfortunately also feel I need to add a little disclaimer, explanation, whatever you want to call it. Because I've noticed with posting stuff about the war uh, that people that have never experienced a war misinterpret the fact that life is going on, you know, that bars are open, that restaurants are open, with the idea that the war is not that serious. In every war throughout history you will see that life goes on. The fighting is at the front and we've all seen the maps on the news a hundred times. Uh, the, the fighting is at the east. If you're in Bakhmut, trust me, you're not going to the fancy coffee shop to have pies, uh, as we did in Kiev. Uh, behind the front line, or the, the life does go on. It always goes on. In the Second World War as well, bars and restaurants were open. Uh, so please don't mistake the fact that life goes on and that Ukrainians are being re resilient and don't want to give in to the terror with the fact that it's not a serious war or that it's fake. Unfortunately, this time we could actually even hear the bombs drop and it's very, very real. Actually, this morning, this, on the day of recording, another 120 missiles uh, were fired uh, at Ukraine at different targets and civilians were hit. So yeah, the threat also throughout Ukraine is very serious still. And that's also one of the reasons for us for doing this. It's not just what we did now was collect money for charities there on our way over to Ukraine. Uh, secondly, it was also important for us to entertain Ukrainians. I mean, when you have war going on, uh, for me, it's, it's lovely to be able to bring a smile to some people's face uh, in these difficult times. And lastly, also, you know, we do this so we can keep talking about the war. Because we're gonna, we, that's what we're going to keep doing while we're on stage and off stage because you know people shouldn't forget that this is still going on we're 10 months in and they're still fighting and it's still a fucking nightmare which i hope will end in 2023 and on that note i wish you all the best for 2023 if you enjoyed this video give it a like because for every like a hamster gets its wings and subscribe and leave a comment comments are appreciated you can also buy me a coffee on coffee.com there's a link somewhere here there's a link where you can buy me a coffee but honestly if you have money to spare give it to one of the charities whose links are also below in the description anyway cheers and have a nice 2023 <music>